Hello everyone, this is Christy. I have started a new series of videos called Watch Me Work and um, I've recorded this graphic I've designed for my friend Chris Menard for his uh, one of his videos for his YouTube channel and I've been doing quite a lot of these recently and I thought maybe it would be a good idea to record some of these as I'm doing them. So this commentary that you're hearing is not done while working. So I have worked on this earlier and I've recorded the screen of everything I did and I'm playing back at the normal speed. So I'm adding a bit of commentary for it. So I hope maybe you can benefit from this, uh, seeing some of the techniques. I'm using Zara Designer Pro here to design a 1920 by 1080 uh, image graphic for a YouTube thumbnail. So there are certain constraints when you're designing a YouTube thumbnail. The, the main one being you have a limited space in which you need to send a compelling message to the possible viewer that they should click on your thumbnail. So you, you have to kind of try and convince them to click on it. So thumbnails are one of the leading um, reasons why people click on your videos in the first place. So you kind of have to um, make them interesting and attracting. And of course, you don't want to have them sort of clickbait. Uh, you want to make them enticing, but also transform, transmit the message um, very shortly about what is in the video. So um, I'm all, also trying to get Chris's picture in here and the title is always, you know, you have to find a short version of it um, that allows you to make the font quite large as well as um, accurate. So I'm not bothered at this stage with the fonts. I'm just kind of general feel for the placement of the elements and bringing in all the elements. So I brought the picture in, uh, Chris's uh, picture, and then trying to kind of divide the whole space into thirds or or so. So I'm um, I'm now choosing the fonts and in in Zara you can import pictures and then you can change the fill type of a graphic to be bitmap instead of plain color. You can change it to bitmap and then you just drag one bitmap from your bitmap gallery onto it and as you can see here it fits fits that bitmap into inside of the shape and it still gives you the freedom to alter the shape after you have um, placed the bitmap inside of it and it acts as a clipping mask really so you can you can still resize it and place it and move it around so um, I was trying to get get Chris's picture in here and I'm, I'm using a fade at the bottom there to make it kind of fade into the background and in most of the videos I'm trying to get his name also on the thumbnail sort of a bit of a branding issue there so um, and I've picked some colors from the blue shirt so I was trying to stay away from the sort of purple tints which is also included in one of his series of videos on Microsoft Teams. So that's kind of purplish. So I, I tried to stay away from the color purple because I didn't want those videos to kind of give you the visual cue that they are actually for about Teams and kind of get lost in, in between the other ones. So this is another consideration when you're designing YouTube or video thumbnails that if you're doing a series of things and you kind of design a certain look for a series of, of videos, then you're kind of choosing a color theme for that that's appropriate. And then it can be tricky to create new thumbnails for something else if you're sharing the same color. So visually, if you're creating a series of video, you're trying to stay with the same color theme and maybe an icon and um, yeah, so here in this particular one, I was trying to stay away from purple. Also, there was a series of um, videos that Chris has on his channel about Zoom, which are kind of light blue. Does, you know, that was also considered, I, I tried to stay away from that light blue. 
And here I'm, I'm playing a bit with the placement of the name. I, I can't really make up my mind about where to put the name. So um, I've decided to just set it aside for a while and design the graphic, the leading graphic of the thumbnail. So here I'm trying to design sort of like a th um, clipboard. This video that he was going to publish was about the Windows clipboard. So I'm trying to design a clipboard similar to the... Um, Windows clipboard app kind of playing with the with the shape there and um, in Zara you can you can manipulate the shapes using these Bezier no nodes and handles and then you, you change the outline um, and then the color and then you take the background off so you can create a nice icon but it's icon looking graphic um, that's going to fill that space there and be suggestive to the topic of the video. I also thought about branding this clipboard with the Windows logo, so I decided to sort of include the Windows logo in here and place it on this clipboard as a suggestive um, a visual cue that this was the Windows clipboard. I've decided that this um, icon is a bit small and it's kind of competing with the uh, Chris's picture. So I'm trying different layouts here, trying to break the text down, keeping the size kind of the same and kind of altering the placement of the text to allow me to make this icon larger. And um, 
I, I, I realized that I had to probably make Chris's um, picture smaller because it's not really the main element of the thumbnail. Uh, it's good for branding, but um, it's, you know, it's kind of visually busy there. So I decided to make the picture smaller. So I've added a different uh, background for the um, clipboard icon to try and separate it from the rest of the the graphic so I'm using kind of like a division by three roughly and changing the background so that um, the clipboard kind of sticks out of the middle area into this the right side there Finally, I was um, trying to see if it works better to have the graphic slanted to align with the lines in the background, but I thought it looked too distorted, so I put it back on there. Um, so I'm kind of close to the final process here. I'm making that line thinner because it was not equal in width. And I think 
this was the final final graphic I just added a bit of a fade in the background there to give those a bit of a very variety on color and um, that's it so I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe learned something about my process and maybe Zara if you enjoy these videos please let me know and I will make more and uh, let me know if you want me to explain more stuff so until next time subscribe to my channel and see you.